Hello, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. I just had a, just started my video and I had to stop it. So I had a, about three or four ambulances and fire trucks go by me, and I wasn't going to have that in the video because that was extremely loud. So, anyways, I hope you're having a good start to your Friday. Uh, here it is bone chilling cold. It's we got a lot of very high wind gusts, but you know we usually have that in March here. We usually lose electric too because of the wind in March. I don't know what it is with March and this part of the country but we get real windy in March anyways I know you're not here to listen about the weather uh, as fascinating as it may be I probably know just as much about the uh, weather as the meteorologist on TV because it doesn't seem like they can ever get anything right but that's nor here nor there um, you know I grew up uh, as I've said many times I've grown up in church and you know I grew up on what they call the old time religion some called it you know hellfire and brimstone that was a another name for it where you know obvious for obvious reasons what the the, the minister preached about uh but that's what i grew up on and you know i can say this about america then and america today right now big difference okay there's one thing i can say no matter what America went through, okay, let's take it. Let's take an instant, uh, uh, a point in American history uh, that's not so far back, 20th century. Let's take the Depression, and I'm going to tell you the difference between then and now. Now, in the Depression, we all know what that was about. People uh, lost their jobs. Unemployment was sky high. Uh, you, you had. Uh, uh, just m people were miserable, depressed. You know, they call it the depression. Um, but there's one thing that was different then than now. People pulled together. People loved and people helped. You had churches that would unite. Multiple churches would unite together as one and feed thousands of people. This is what they would do. They would feed thousands of people soup lines, you know, uh, soup kitchens, whatever they call them. You know, that's one thing, because this nation was more of a godly nation. Yes, we might have been going through rough times, and the Depression was about as rough, at least with the 20th century, as it could get. I'm talking for America. Of course, we had both world wars, you know, sandwiched in there. But I'm just speaking about the United States. We were more of a God-fearing, Christian-based nation. And no matter what the times was, no matter how bad it got, and it got bad, we had that to draw upon. There was more unity, more love, a, a more of an outpouring of, 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 of hope in, in, in some of the most darkest times for the American family. We had that. And today we have everything you can imagine at the tip of your finger. You, you pick up your phone, you, you can order food from just about any restaurant and have it delivered to your front door. You know, you can get entertainment, worldwide entertainment, like that with a push of a button. But does that make it better? No, because we are basically... I don't want to say we're a godless nation, but we're pretty well much bordering on that right now. Uh, and this is why we're seeing the division, the hate, the wickedness running through this country, the corruption in our political arena in Washington and in our state capitals, you know, state houses and so forth, and the governorships. This is, I mean, it's rife. It's literally rife. The corruption, the cheating, the lying, the backstabbing, just to get ahead. That None of that is godly in any form. So I don't care how much advanced America becomes. Without God, it's still going to be a loser. I don't care, you know, what we do. Without God, we will never, ever progress in a manner that we truly could, with if this nation would turn to God, you know, 
And I'm not talking about every single living human being, 300 plus million in the United States, because that, you know, yes, God can do anything, but we also know not everybody's going to make it to heaven. So, you know, just even if a percentage, let's say 10%, just say 10% more of America turn back to God. Can you imagine just 10% how much more we would prosper? But it's not happening. People are turning more to technology today than they're turning to God. They're turning to these, these, you know, the, the, the internet with their their, you know, their gurus that they have on the internet, that, that, that all of them have the same thing. They all have life's answer. They all have the meaning of life. Okay? All of them in some shape, form, or manner. And they snooker in a lot of people with that hogwash. But without God, America is going to be nothing. America is nothing without God. You got to remember from the very, the very foundation of this nation from the birth of this nation our forefathers had enough sense to realize that you don't shut God out now I'm not saying every forefather was God fearing you know Bible thumping no of course not I mean you had some in there that were pretty you know scummy I mean let's just be honest you know you had some that that were pretty downright nasty so not every one of them, but the majority, or not, I wouldn't even say majority, but more than what we would even have today. They had enough common sense to realize, it, you know, if you're going to be a prosperous nation, you cannot shut God out. And sadly, America is doing that right now. They're shutting God out. They're trying to silence the Christian message. They're trying to silence the gospel of Jesus Christ because they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. If preachers would get back to preaching the old-time religion and the hellfire and brimstone, and that doesn't mean every message they preach on is hell. It surely wouldn't hurt at times. But you get my drift. If they preached on the Word of God and stopped worrying about what somebody's feelings would be, or if they're going to hurt so-and-so, stop worrying about that tithe money coming into church, worry about winning souls and keeping people in the seats the right way, not catering to them because they might not want to hear this or that. So you're going to work around the Bible. If we were to just stop a percentage of what's going on, we would prosper like you've never seen before. I mean, like I've never seen before. Now, we do know in Revelations that it says, you know, in the last days, there's going to be one great revival. There's going to be one more great coming to the Lord. Okay, y'all know what that means. I don't have to explain what that means, uh, what a revival is. If you don't know what that means, that means a lot of people are going to give their lives to God in this world. There's going to be one more great revival before, you know, Christ comes, comes back. All right, we know that it says this very plainly in the book of Revelations. In the last days, there's going to be one more revival, one great, last great spiritual awakening. I don't believe we've seen that yet. I know in America we haven't. You know, so... Nothing's going to change, folks, until this country gets back to where it needs to be. It's just not going to happen. You know, uh, it's just not going to happen. I mean, we have some of the most godless, wicked leaders in Washington that we've ever had. I mean, just think back the past 30 years of who's been in that White House. I mean, we've had leaders that have that have done perverted sexual things in the Oval Office, the People's Office. We've had so much backstabbing and so much corruption and a war started on lies, on WMDs, you know, where soldiers died over something that was never there to begin with. That's how that started. Just think about what's been in that White House over the last, just the last, since since 1990, let's just say from 1990, from, from uh, Bush 41 onward. Just think about what's been in that White House. And you wonder 
why America is continuing to spiral downward. It doesn't take an Albert Einstein, who I might add did not believe in God, uh, supposed to be this, at his time, the smartest man, if not one of the smartest men on earth, but he was an atheist. He did not believe in God. So to me, he wasn't that smart. I mean, I, I know intellectual wise, he was on another level than myself, obviously. So I am no Einstein, but he had no belief in God. But anyways, that's just a little side note. Um, you know, until this happens, until this corruption and this wickedness is, is removed, when nothing's going to change. Now, let me let me reiterate. A lot's going to change, but it isn't going to be the progression that we want to see. The progression me and you and all of us want, that's not going to be what's going to happen. So anyways, that's all I got for you today. Um, I just want to say God bless to each and every one of you. I want to thank you again for watching my videos. I want to thank you for just for just being you. And, and just say thank you. You know, I really, really want to tell you all thank you. God bless each and every one of you. I'll see you hopefully on Sunday after church. Take care. God bless. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.